who are you, what you teach, and how long have you been in service? I am Coach Mac. I'm Sergeant Mac. I teach computer science, and I was in the service a total of 11 years. I had a break from 2003 to 2006, and then I got back in from 2013 to 2021. Well, my name's Craig Heckel, and I am the aviation drone instructor here at Irving High School. And I served from 1994 to 2014, so 20 years, retired vet. My name is Ricardo Hernandez. Um, everybody calls me Mr. Hernandez, obviously. Uh, I have served for, I took, I initially served for six years, and then I took a five year break, and I'm now back into in the reserves. And this is year two in the reserve. So overall, this is my eighth year serving. What do you remember about the day you enlisted? I remember when I enlisted was probably back in 2003, the first time. And the reason was because of the events of 9-11. Um, I was actually a senior in high school when that happened. So my freshman year into college was 2002. I really didn't grasp it. but. Come 2003, when we the war actually kicked off against Iraq, is when I um, enlisted, and it was because of what had happened on those events, and we lost some close friends, and a lot of stability, instability was happening in the world. So, so I remember, of course, being a little nervous. It was exciting to be embarking on a new adventure, uh, saying goodbye to everybody, and wondering what was ahead, what the future in uh, future held. The day I enlisted, so whenever you enlist in the military, they always make you remember the day because that's your initial entry date. So I enlisted November 3rd, um, and I was a senior here at Irving High. And the thing that I was worried about probably the most was getting counted absent from school because for some reason Irving High was making a big deal about being absent for doing military days. So I wasn't even stressed or worried about or proud of being in the Army. I was more stressed about I'm going to get marked absent here at school. So that's what I remember. Can you describe a funny moment from a boot camp? Oh, man, I have so many of them. Actually, you know, <laughs> we had um, we used to have like based on when you go to boot camp, you're divided into different platoons. And we had war on platoons, which was just like, all boot camp is, I'm sorry, I'm going to spill the beans, it's a game, okay? It's about who's the best platoon. So we used to play pranks on each other. And uh, I remember one time, man, it was like uh, <laughs> some of the soldiers would get locked up in the war, in like the, their wall lockers if they were like snitching or something like that. But it, I mean, it was so many bondful moments. I mean, I remember going through the gas chamber. That was fun to me. Nick at night, which you get through basic training, that's going to be like your, it's called Victory Forge. Basically, what's going to happen is they're going to be shooting tracers at you. And you got to climb like through Bob wire, the whole football field, like on your hands and knees with your rifle. So, I mean, it's, you think it's, it, it sounds crazy, but it's actually a drilling runch. I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I think that was pretty fun. So the funniest thing I remember is one day we were all excited. We just got back to the dorm room and it was somebody's birthday and we sang happy birthday really loud to them. And then you're not supposed to have any fun. So somebody or one of the drill instructors came to the, uh, to our dorm and he was beaten on the door and he, uh, he was yelling at us for, you know, having a good time. Um, so, uh, the next time it was somebody's birthday, we, uh, we whispered happy birthday to them. We sang happy birthday by whispering. So it was kind of funny. Boot camp, there's nothing but funny moments. Uh, Cause everything's so boring. So if somebody farts, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> but there was a, the funniest moment was uh, there was a drill sergeant um, that uh, he had a funny voice and he was talking like this. And uh, there was a guy that could copy him perfectly so every Sunday we got a chance to call our, our family, let them know that we're good. So you go to the pay phones and you go to the pay phone. And then there was a guy calling his wife to see how his kids are and his wife. He's like in his mid thirties and this little teenager who copied his voice, which is my best friend there. He then uh, uh, goes next to the phones and he's like, hey, you guys get off the phone. And then he's like, sorry, baby, I got to get off the phone. And he hangs up and he's, he turns around. And he's like. He's like, I thought you were the drill sergeant, but it was a guy just imitating him. 
they almost got in a fight, but then we had cell phones, so the guy let him borrow his cell phone to call his wife. So that was probably one of the funniest moments. What are some of the things you remember about adapting to military life? I wouldn't say the moment you get off that bus. Like, there's two times where you're going to get checked. When I say checked, that's when it's going to be like, ah! The first time is when you get to recession. Reception. It's on a Tuesday. That's when you go, you get all your paperwork, you get everything in order. You need to take the boot camp. What really got me was when I got to the shark tank. That's when um, it's called shark day. When you get to your camp and that's on that Friday and you get as soon as you get off that bus, you got all your all the stuff you're going to need. You're holding it. You get all these drill sergeants coming at you. Blah, 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 you think you are? Blah, blah. And that's when you know it's going to hit real. And they tell you to take that last phone call to make that last phone call. And I remember calling my wife and my at the time and my daughter and I was like, I miss you guys. This is going to be the last time you're here for me for a while. I mean, it was just nerve wracking. So. So um, you don't call in sick to work. You go to what's called sick call. Um, a lot more discipline. Uh, you have to be respectful, of course. You don't, um, you know, you don't talk back and those sorts of things. You try to be a lot more uh, disciplined where you can and uh, respectful where you can be, of course. Um, you know, they want you to challenge, uh, challenge things because maybe there's something that you haven't, they haven't seen, but uh, you have to do it in a respectful way. Um, and uh yeah it's uh it's a little different uh society one thing that was really hard to adapt to was sleep so i went in as a 17 year old teenager um and all of us here get plenty of sleep so like i went there and i was struggling to wake up at four in the morning and go and do a job but like all the grown men that were there that had enlisted they were doing just fine because guess what? You wake up and go to work. But at, in high school, nobody here wakes up at four in the morning to go to work, right? Because everybody has school. So that was one of the hardest things to adjust to. What are some things you missed about being in the service? I definitely miss the camaraderie. I do miss that. Uh, I miss, like, I was a weekend warrior after I got out of active duty. So I miss going up there on the weekends and just hanging out. Um, you know, get to hang out with my battle buddies. But, you know, it was just one of them things, like... You get there, you're there all day long and not doing anything. But I, I miss the camaraderie. I miss the ability to travel. I miss the um, – I do miss the uniform, man. I mean, we used to look sharp. You know? so. I miss the camaraderie and the structure and the laughter and the fun we had. It was, um, it was always something going on. Um, I miss the um, – the excitement. I miss going places and uh, the diversity. I miss the diversity and the people. I just met people from all over the all over the world, and I miss the diversity in um, the things you actually saw every day. Every day was something different. Like one day you might see presidential aircraft come in. Um, the next day you might see um, an actor or an actress that's coming in. Um, because they're related to a military member. Uh, so it was every day was something different. I missed that. The five years that I was out, I missed just the friendship, the camaraderie that you have with your people. Um, you barely meet somebody and then they become your brother. So you know, you're, you know you're willing to die for somebody and that person's willing to die for you. It's very rare that you ever get to see or meet that. So it's incredible feeling. To, kn to know you have those people next to you. Can you describe how you felt coming home from combat? When I got home, I was more so isolated. I didn't like big crowds. I think that's where I get that from now. Like, I mean, now you guys might see me in the gym like, yay. But outside of like the school, I don't really go out like into crowds because I, I have PTSD. So being around, being in unfamiliar territories where I have to adapt, it's kind of hard for me. Like, I'm, you'll see me if I'm out somewhere unknown. I'm in a corner looking out. I don't want nothing behind me. So that's some of the things I had to adapt to. The fact that um, I had to always be on my P's and Q's, like where I'm always looking around, you know, like that's just instinct, you know, being out there in combat and then you come back here, you don't know what's happening. So I have to constantly, like, I don't like people walking behind me. I don't like uh, my wife or my daughter at the time to go out 
past a certain time at night because you don't know something can happen at nighttime. You know, it's, it's just some things like that. So I was in combat regions. Uh, I was never in actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, I was in combat areas uh, many times. You're always happy to come home because a lot of your freedoms are taken away. You know, you don't, you can't just pick up a cell phone and call some, somebody. You have to go through what's called DSN lines. Um, you miss being able to just hop on a flight and go visit your family or going out with your friends. You miss those things a lot. You miss uh, going out to a restaurant, you know, grabbing something at Jack in the Box. You know, it's just not there. Uh, they do the best they can, but um, and sometimes you miss the weather. You know, because you might be in a hot location, you might miss the colder, cooler climates. So, um, yeah, those are those are nice things to come back to. Coming home from combat, uh, you're angry. You're angry at everybody. Um, I remember whenever I came home, I was I was really mad because I would wake up early in the morning, and I mean it was quiet, and every, everybody here in Irving, for the most part. Everybody wakes up and, I mean, stuff is quiet. When you're in a war zone or when you're in combat, you're hearing gunshots, you're hearing helicopters, you're hearing people cry, your friends cry. And you come back home and it's silent. You don't hear none of that. So you kind of get angry and you're kind of mad at people because you wake up and you know all that's going on in the world. And you know that everybody's just waking up and like, hmm, I need to brush my teeth. Oh, I need to go to school. And like, that's your biggest thing you have to worry about. And you already know what it's like to be on the other side where people are crying and begging to go to school and people are dying left and right. And you're over here just, ah, oh, I have to go to school. Oh, I have to turn in an assignment. Like, I, I remember just coming back and being angry that both of those things exist. Like, and a lot of people don't know what it is to be on the other side. Do you have advice for others transitioning out of the military? Transitioning out? I would say definitely get with your career counselor. Um, by that, I mean do your six months checkout. Have a plan. Have a career in place. Contact those resources. There's a lot of resources that we didn't get told about. I'm still finding out about. Even And I've been out of service since 2001, officially. I'm mean, 2021, I'm sorry. So there's a lot of resources out there. You just got to ask because they won't tell you, unfortunately. And I mean, it's, it's sad, but that's the best thing I can tell you to do is just do your six months checkout. Keep searching. Say no. Continue evolving yourself. I would say while you're still in, make sure you get your education set. Uh, make sure you have education opportunities. Make sure that you travel and see as much as you can. And uh, take advantage of the military because they want you to do that. They are investing in you and they have a lot of programs that you can be involved in. Get involved in every one of those before you transition out. Uh, once you're out, you have to kind of be prepared for, um, you know, the lack of discipline and uh, apathy and things like that. Uh, but definitely take advantage of everything that you have available to you before you get out. If you're transitioning out of the military, I would say use use what you learn. I mean, for your benefit. Um for example, whenever I first joined the Army, I went into aviation. I went into Army aviation, and I started flying drones. So in Afghanistan, that's the type of stuff I was doing. And then I started working in behavior here at school, and then now I'm teaching aviation. So use what you learned. Use it for your benefit. And that goes for everybody. I mean, just not – that goes for anybody transitioning into any, anything. Just use what you learned. Thank you for your time.